And we are live. Um, welcome everyone who's listening in. Uh, this is a special edition of Real Nifty Real Talk with uh, uh, artist Lila Pinto. So um, I hope everyone is having a great day and welcome to everyone that is watching live as well as those that have joined us later on on a recorded version. Uh, today we're actually broadcasting live on LinkedIn, YouTube and Twitter all at the same time due to the power of technology. So if you're tuned into any of those, welcome, welcome. And if you're on LinkedIn or YouTube, please feel free to use the comment section throughout to ask any burning questions you may have for Lila. And if some of you can just drop me a message now to let me know that you can hear and see us, that would be awesome. So uh, let's get this started. Uh, my name is Jamie Parmenter. And uh, just for a little context on my background, I'm the CEO of Real Nifty, who's uh, running this interview. Uh, Real Nifty is a curated physical and digital NFT marketplace and agency focused on helping accomplished artists and creatives showcase and sell their work. So please, 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 if you do get a chance, check out our fantastic artists and projects over at www.realnifty.xyz. I promise you won't be disappointed. So we're very lucky to have with us today one of those artists with a collection on the marketplace, and that is Lila Pinto. So before I introduce her, I just want to give you guys a bit of a background on Lila so we can uh, get the conversation flowing. So uh, Lila is a classically trained New York artist with an ever-growing following of collectors and curators. Her artwork reveals a unique artistic point of view and conveys any emotional component that myself and many others find irresistible. Her paintings have been included in prestigious juried art shows, shown in galleries, received awards, published and displayed on a grand scale on the Jumbotron in Times Square, as well as the Oculus in the World Trade Center and on a giant 24 foot tall monolith at Scope uh, at the Art Fair during Art Basel Miami week. So she's a well-known artist. She's you know been uh, displayed the world over. It's fantastic. And on top of this, I will also be heading over to NFT NYC next week to display her artwork there and join in all the fun, which I'm sure lots of people will be having. So uh, yeah, I've known Lila for a while now, and it's a pleasure to also call her a friend. And uh, Lila, welcome. I hope you enjoyed your in intro. Thank you. That's very kind, Jamie. You're, you're so sweet. You're wonderful. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I just want to have say a quick disclaimer before we begin, all opinions are mine. As with all things art, Web3 and blockchain, uh, this is not financial advice. Please do your own research. <laughs> well put, Lila. Like anything, we we, yeah, we just got to make sure we say some disclaimers now and again. But um, yeah, I'm so glad to have you here, Lila. I'm sure everyone in the crowd is uh, delighted to see you, and it's going to be a fun, fun chat, I think. So... To begin with, for those of you, those people that don't know you, Lila, I mean, tell us a bit about your fascinating background and how you came to find art in your life. I know personally that it's been a very, you know, a great journey for you, and I'd love to learn a bit more. I mean, please tell us a bit about your background. Yeah, thank you. It's It's been a wonderful journey. It's been, you know, it's been fun. It's been inspiring for me. As you know, I have a background on Wall Street. Um, and prior to coming to art, I've been fascinated by art and painting for many years before I even picked up a paintbrush. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a, now an established artist, but um, I've, I've just been, you know, going to museums and, and art galleries. And um, when the financial crisis happened, I actually took, uh, took up an art uh, lesson just out of curiosity and uh, that led me down the path of you know uh, learning how to paint um, I, I spent maybe 10,000 hours practicing my craft studying different styles and techniques of painting and um, I've learned still life landscape and that took me um, to um, contemporary art to abstract and now digital art uh, it, it, it's also been important because I've learned uh, perspective, light, uh, the effects of light, color theory, and uh, you know art history, and learning from the, the old masters and modern masters. So here I am. Awesome. No, I love that. And 
I know you're a big advocate of this, you know, 10,000 hours of learning, how it can really, you know, help you grow your craft and, and build it in the right direction. And I mean, as, as you just mentioned there, Lila, you didn't take up this craft recently. You've been working on your style and learning and educating for a long time. And this is what, you know, Real Nifty wants to bring to the table. We want to bring those classically trained artists like yourself into the N NFT space. So it's fantastic to have you there and have your level of education um, in the art world to uh, bring along and display to uh, uh, the followers of Real Nifty. Um, yeah, so, so I think, I think one of the things that, uh, collectors, thank you. I think one of the things that collectors have been intimidated by, um, is, and I've, I've heard this a lot is they, they say that they don't know enough about art in collecting. And, um, I always say that, you know, it's okay to just follow your heart buy what you like, um, just, you know, go to art fairs, look at art, go online. Uh, is there something specific you wanted me to address, Jamie, in your question? I mean, for that, I, I understand what, what you're saying with that, Lila. I mean, obviously, you know, like you say, some people can almost be a bit nervous at getting into the art world. And I think that's that actually bridges to my next question quite, quite well. Um, I mean, how you got into NFTs and what the NFT space actually is when it comes to fine art. And I think fine art manages to cross that bridge and make people feel a bit more confident in the art world. You know, some people I know that are actually even scared to go in a real life gallery because they don't feel they know enough about um, the art world and the artists within there. But it's, it's crazy. And I think like what NFTs are doing is opening the doors for fine art to a new audience. And I think that's vital to really, you know, move the industry forward and make fine art a more public domain and really bring people into the space. So with this in mind, Lila, I'd love to, you know, get your thoughts on how you got into NFTs and, you know, what do you love about the technology and, you know, how has it helped you as an artist? So I actually got into NFTs, um, I think, just, you know, when I first heard about the Beeple News and... Uh, and then I attended NFT NYC back in 2021, mm -hmm. and um, that was fascinating. I was exposed to many people in the industry, and I did a deep dive. I read a lot, met a lot of people, and it's just been fascinating since then. And Jamie, early Web3 was about art, building community around the art, and everyone was just enjoying the art. It was not about the money at all. Mm -hmm. And it was just a lot of fun. What I loved about NFTs was the intent uh, behind it, which was to liberate art and the artists from traditional gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. While traditional art is confined to time and space, uh, the collector has to be in the right city. They have to be in the right gallery. They have to know when it's open, when the right show is on. So there's a lot of constraints, right? From the yeah. collector standpoint, from the artist standpoint, they have to be in the right gallery. They have to be accepted into a gallery. So now I think what's exciting about all of this is that all you need is an internet co connection. So that has been the biggest breakthrough. And for yeah. me, that's what's been very exciting. Of course, you know, fast forward, there, there've been a lot of issues you know, we're now in a crypto winter and we can address that. But um, the the ethos of Web3 has been about decentralization, about ownership and control. And it puts the artist at the forefront of all of this. And, yeah. and, and I think that's what's exciting about, uh, about this. Hmm. No, I completely agree, Lila. And like you said, I think the industry was kind of pushed forward during the pandemic when artists and musicians and everyone you know they couldn't go out and sell and display their work in galleries because no one was um allowed to go out and um galleries weren't allowed to open so they joined these you know uh communities online um which had just you know started the the web free um continuum was just growing from then and you had platforms like clubhouse that came around with their audio events and everyone jumped into and I can't tell you the amount of people I've found in uh, Clubhouse and other platforms like on Twitter spaces as well that, that's in the mindset of um, 
helping artists, you know, sell and showcase their artwork when they're locked in home. So it was fantastic to see. And I'm so glad there's um, artists like yourself that have managed to get into the web free space and, and make a living and be able to sell your artwork as NFT. So it's um, fantastic for me. Um, yeah. what Sorry, I also want to add that I think that trend started before NFTs, mm -hmm. like uh, social media, uh, and, and before um, um, before the pandemic. So to your point, I think uh, artists and musicians uh, got into um, social media. They were representing themselves, mm -hmm. and the pandemic. You're absolutely right. That was a train that started and it accelerated. Yeah, definitely. And I think, yeah, like you say, Lyra, I think it did, it managed to give artists and musicians, you know, the right to promote themselves and be able to sell their their artwork in, a, in different and new ways um, rather than the traditional ways, which has been fantastic to see. And I really think, you know, your artwork really has transitioned really well into the NFT space. Um, I mean, tell us a bit more about your actual art. I mean, your love of, of abstract art in general and, and how it's shaped your life. Um, what, what kind of influences have you had with your artwork, Lyra? So in, in terms of artists, um, I, I've had a number of influences. So um, I, first of all, I'm, I'm influenced by the greats. Uh, Michelangelo, if you look at my website, um, you know, I'm classically trained, so I love Michelangelo, Da Vinci, Rembrandt, uh, and I've spent hours training uh, at places like the Met, copying the old masters. I'm influenced by uh, some of the Hudson River School painters, but on the um, abstract side, um, there's, there's too many to, to, to name. Um, I would say Clifford Still, uh, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of artists, Monet among the Impressionists, uh, in fact, one of my real nifty paintings, the, the Evergreen um, uh, artwork is influenced by, I don't know if I can show it to you. Let me see if I can uh, toggle here. Do we have the ability to do that? No, maybe not. But that piece in, um, in particular is influenced by Monet. So I would say that, that the influences are, are many. Uh, I love Joan Mitchell. Uh, among the women artists. Um, another painter that's influenced me among the more recent uh, artists is, uh, um, I shouldn't say, no, not Frida Kahlo, but um, I, I, there's, there's too many to name, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, artists that go all the way back from, you know, three or 400 years to present. Brilliant. No, I love it. And for, for those of you that, that want to see Lila's collection, um, yeah, please head over to the Real Nifty uh, website. We've got the collection that Lila has on there at the moment is entitled Exuberance. And uh, you just go over to realnifty.xyz where you can have a look at it. I mean, let's, let's talk more about your collection. What was the um, inspiration for your Real Nifty collection, Lila? So... First of all, I think I like to paint abstract art because it gives me the freedom to explore my creativity. Uh, and uh, I love to express myself through color. Um, and um, uh, I, I love to um, express my thoughts, my feelings and emotions, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's through a beautiful seascape uh, I also enjoy the challenge of creating something beautiful and original that can evoke certain feelings in others who view my work. So yeah. in the case of the Real Nifty collection, uh, I've used you know, colors of yellow and green and blue that are very vibrant. And um, so I wish we could actually show some of them while we're talking, but um, so those, yeah, so those, those, um, uh, the, the, those are, you know, uh, are, are an expression of my uh, feelings that I uh, felt when I was creating them, mm -hmm. and um, and those and that's why the titles are are, are as such, effervescent, exuberant. Um, yeah, they're, they're very vibrant. The colors are vibrant, and the emotions are are vibrant. 
I love it. I love it. No, this is you really have got to go and have a look. And uh, yeah, we'll try and get some images up on the screen for you guys in the meantime. But um, yeah, for me, one of the pieces that I really enjoyed, like there is your piece called uh, Elated, which um, I think you mentioned before is inspired by joyful, joyful colours found in nature. And for me, that piece just really, you know, pops off the screen. So it's definitely something to uh, for people to check out if if um, if you can. Um, it's brilliant. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to know a bit more now, Lila, about how, about your love of the web free space. I mean, you're one of the artists that has really, you know, it's opened doors for you. How does that make you feel? And I mean, what what parts of the web free space do you love? Is there any parts of it that you don't like that much? Because I know like some people, you know, struggle with certain areas in web free, whereas others, you know, they revel in it. So it'd be, it'd be great to get to know, you know, your thoughts on this. Well, I, I think the, 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 the best part about Web3 is the passion that everyone has, um, the, the sense of community that it's brought, you know, so many people together. You know, I have met amazing people from all over the world. Uh, I, it's, it's enabled, you know, artists, it's enabled creators, whether it's musicians, writers, um, to come together to have this sense of freedom, connection, and it's a sense of camaraderie. It's almost like there's this renaissance, this movement. And to me, that's it's just been freeing. It's been um, wonderful. So, and I haven't seen that in a, in a long time. And so that to me has been, um, I think, in, incredible. Um, what has been daunting is the fact that for many people who don't have a business background, I think there isn't a roadmap. So a lot of people are, are figuring it out. I think that has caused some trouble in the space because um, there, there have been a lot of bad actors, unfortunately, in the crypto space. And so it's been tr tough uh, to navigate, especially during the crypto winter. So. I would say that that's the downside of this whole space. And it's turned off a lot of people. A lot of people have left the space. Um, so so that's kind of been uh, unfortunate. Yeah. And that's hit, been hitting the headlines. Yeah. Uh, and I always caution people, do your own research, do your homework. This is not uh, something you want to just get into willy-nilly. Mm -hmm. You want to be really careful. You want to be really thoughtful. I actually posted something on this uh, on LinkedIn recently. And I said, uh, you know, you, you want to be really, really careful and thoughtful. Have a roadmap. Have a plan. Do your research. Uh, don't just get in for the money. Uh, do it for the right reasons. Um, if it's for the art, you know, do it for the because you love the art, do it, follow your passion, follow your heart, but follow your head as well. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. And like you say, like in, in the past, there has been problems with more of, it's, it's more based around, you know, those cartoon PFP projects that, that people have, you know, lost money on. And I think this is what we're trying to do and what you're trying to do with your, your fine art at Real Nifty as well. Like there is, we're trying to bring, you know, that sense of trust and calm to a project where people actually get something from their NFTs, they have to buy them because they like your artwork, not just because they want to make you know some quick money. They they buy it for someone like Real Nifty that is in the long game and wants to you know be there for people and actually build something that's going to last in the web free space and move that technology forward. So it's, you know it's great to have you on board to join this journey and be a, you know a, a figurehead for the web free space in fine arts. Um, yeah, thank you. And I, one of the things I've been doing, Jamie, is really educating people. I've been educating my um, uh, collectors. I've been educating, um, you know, trying to help other artists as well who don't have a business background. Mm -hmm. uh, really uh, trying to help other artists um, navigate the space. Uh, I've been trying to help other people understand uh, blockchain and crypto. Now, I'm I'm not an expert in those things, um, and you know you've helped me a lot. You've been amazing when I've had, for instance, trouble with connecting my own MetaMask, and and um, you know this this space is is not easy to navigate. Yeah. Uh, but whatever I have learned, I have tried to help 
other people and help other people not make mistakes um, and not make some of the mistakes I had made, which, you know, it took me a lot of time to learn this. So if I can help others navigate this and help their learning curve, I think that's been uh, really, um, you know, rewarding for me. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And and like you said, it's it's definitely a passion of mine, educating people in the space. And as it moves forward, it is going to get easier. But in the meantime, it's, it's great that people have uh, people like me and you who can actually teach these people going forward or who are entering it for the first time. And again, it's something that I want to help. I want to help those galleries in the real world and those people who are in the fine art world, that whether they're artists or promoters, I want to help them, you know, understand the technology and how it can help artists and actually, you know, grow their audience and, and bring it to some new people. So yes, it's great to have you here um, helping move the industry forward like that, definitely. Um, before we move on to the next question, I just want to say thank you to some of the people sending some comments uh, through at the moment. So, uh, Juliana Aries, uh, thanks for coming along. Uh, Jonathan Moss, and uh, we've also got Mr. Tino Labasco in uh, Belasco in the crowd as well. So uh, they're all throw, throwing up some uh, comments. We've got uh, this is uh, fantastic from Tino. And we've got actually a, a, a lovely little message from uh, Juliana here, actually. We've got, um, as you can see on the screen now, art serves as a significant tool for mirroring contemporary society. With the merging of art and technology in our era, NFTs offer an excellent platform to showcase the essence of our time. That's a great comment, and I completely agree with that. It's the merging of these two, you know, technologies, the, the, the traditional and the te technological, that is really going to help open doors for people into the art space. So uh, thanks for that great comment, uh, Juliana. Right, OK, so if anyone else does have any questions as well, please um, uh, continue to uh, put them through. Um, Lila and myself are happy to, uh, to answer them, so please continue. Cool. Right. Um, next, I wanted to talk to you a bit about NFT NYC, uh, Lila. So as uh, for those of you in the crowd that don't know, there's a big conference in New York uh, next week called NFT NYC. It's been running for about four years now, I think. And um, it's just, you know, it's on everyone's calendar in the NFT space. There's lots going on. Lots of fun, lots of talks, lots of um, crazy stuff, uh, lots of satellite events and parties. And uh, Lila's artwork has actually been displayed this year. And in reality, this is actually Lila's fourth year of attending. So, um, yeah, I mean, how do you feel about that and the event itself, uh, Lila, being an OG? I'm sure you have lots of information for us. Uh, so, first of all, I'm, I'm thrilled that, you know, my, my work was selected again to be featured in Hudson Yards uh, this year. It was selected by the NFT NYC team. And um, so, yeah, I'm really honored uh, that they did that. I'm also honored that they chose my work um, in 2022 to have my work featured on the Jumbotron in Times Square. Um, and uh, actually, thank you for mentioning that, Jamie, but uh, as an, you know, concurrent to the, my artwork being featured during uh, NFT NYC, the American Art Collector magazine is featuring the same painting, the physical artwork that um, is being featured in, in, uh, at NFT NYC. The, the physical artwork is being featured in the American Art Collector magazine. So it's a double feature, if you will, of the physical artwork in the magazine. And it's the April issue. And this was just a coincidence that the physical painting was picked up by the magazine and the digital artwork that is being displayed digitally. Uh, and that is um, a painting that is on Super Rare. So, and the title of the painting is called By the Sea 2. Uh, and it's an animated uh, art book. So again, I wish we could show this visually so that people could see the painting. But anyway, um, so so thank you for, for sharing that. And I'm excited. And um, yeah, I, you know, I'll tell you, last year, I think it was a little disappointing, the experience uh, of attending. Mm -hmm. the, it was just, uh, it was, a, the, there were way too many people. It was a bit of a... The, there were a lot of 
I should say, NFT, PFP projects that were hyping the, their projects. There was not a lot of substance. Um, it was a little scattered. There were um, the first year that I attended, I think, was the best. There was a lot of real learning that was going on. There was not as much art. There was a lot of, I think there were a lot of founders that were building. Um, the second NFT, the second um, NFT conference that I attended was at NFT Miami. And that was fantastic for the networking, the people that I met. It was much smaller. It was uh, in Miami, so it was on a much smaller scale. I met amazing uh, people connections, and a lot of them were people from um, LinkedIn that I had only met online, and then we met, uh, there were a few people from Twitter, there were some people from my friends from Instagram, but it was fabulous to actually connect with these people in real life. And um, so I think that is, to me, is the power of some of these events is, you know, if you can go to the breakout sessions, you can um, listen to some real vis visionary speakers. In the first session, I actually met with Gary V uh, briefly. He he had just come out of the session. He was, of course, mobbed by, by hundreds of people. Uh, I also met, again, I didn't meet, I spoke to, um, or I heard from the, the two people who bought Beeple, um, with the Beeple piece. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm blanking on their names, but you know who I'm talking about. They, they're the guys who made history. Wow. And uh, yeah, so they, it, it was very exciting because you could put a name to a face and these people are, are really legends in the space. Mm -hmm. And uh, I look forward to this year. I have no idea, you know, what, what it holds, but, you know, every, every conference is different. And um, I think the, the ethos of, of the space is that it, it holds excitement, it holds hope, mm -hmm. and one just hopes that uh, they deliver. Yeah, no, 100%. There's some, um, yeah, I love, you know, you, you've been around quite a few events, so it's good to get some feedback from which ones are good because there's lots out there where, you know, they're not as good as others. And it, it, I think it depends on what she, which years you go as well. Like you said, last year at NFT NYC, you know, some people didn't enjoy it as much as the, as the, the second year. And we're hoping that this fourth year is going to be a, a blast again. And it'll be a good place of people to connect and, you know, grow in this area of utility that Web3 is, uh, is moving to and actually make sure that it moves in the right direction, which I feel is very important. And I love that you, you know, brought up about the Hudson Yards billboards um, activations and, and um, you know, what you've been doing in the past with the, the Times Square screens. And, uh, you know, Art Basel as well. It's, it's fantastic that you've been to these events and have been able to showcase your work to these, uh, these amazing people. And something else that um, happened for you recently, Lila, that um, I love is you were recently, you know, a curator at the Dream on Dream Big exhibition at the Foundry in Dubai. Um, I mean, tell us a bit more about this. I mean, you were selected to curate this exhibition. And I mean, that just shows, you know, the passion that you've generated in the space and the people looking to you to, to help them decide what artwork to put up in, in certain exhibitions to, you know, showcase them to the best of their ability. Yeah, thank you. Actually, before I, I, I get into the Dubai, I just wanted to touch on um, Art Basel. Uh, and so that was that was a very exciting uh, offshoot of um, NFT NYC. And I was able to show my work at uh, Art Basel Miami, and then more recently at South by Southwest, and at NFT uh, LA, Outer Reg LA, which was actually just two weeks ago. Um, so th th these are all the connections that we make um, that come out of, you know, some of these, uh, uh, you know, live events. Mm -hmm. But to, to get to your question on Dubai, yeah, so that, that was an honor for me um, to be invited to be a curator at, for the Dubai event. So I was approached to be a judge, uh, to select artists from around the world to uh, curate this exhibition. So it was an online exhibition of about 
there's over 300 artists, maybe three or 400 artists globally that had submitted their work. And um, it was an honor for me because in, previously I was the one who was submitting my paintings and other people were choosing my work. And that's actually how my work had been shown at places like you know Times Square and at the Oculus World Trade Center. And now uh, I was actually uh, a judge and I was selecting other artists. So uh, I think it was it was an honor, but it also made me a little bit more sensitive because you know I was now in their shoes and uh, I I was you know choosing their you know anytime I rejected an artist's work I I felt really bad for them <laughs> because I wanted to include all of them but I was only given so many time you know so many slots yeah um, but yeah it was it was um, difficult but it was also um, you know it was also enlightening for me because uh, I I was. Um, you know, I was uh, able to use my judgment and my prior experience, uh, both as as an artist and also from having uh, seen so much work, I was able to offer my perspective to include, uh, you know, artists. And again, because it was an NFT and a, an online uh, exhibition, it was really a wonderful experience for so many artists to have their work shown in Dubai because for many of them, they there were some artists from Africa, from Asia, from countries they had never had the opportunity to have their work shown. Uh, and it was, it was just such a beautiful thing. And I was just happy to be a part of that and happy to share in their joy and their success and their journey. So for me to be a part of that whole experience was was very joyful. And uh, I, I, I just felt bad for the ones that were not selected. I, I just wanted to, I wish I could have just included all of them. Yeah, no, it must be difficult to, you know, pick out, pick out the ones and obviously you don't want to, you know, upset anyone, do you? But at the, at the same time, you know, you, they want you, that you're there to curate it in the style that is going to actually fit the venue. So, I mean, there's definitely a lot of weight on your shoulders and those kind of things. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. We've got a couple of comments actually from, um, from Jonathan Moss. So thanks for the comments, Jonathan. Um, first one. I showed at Basel in Switzerland a number of years ago. The opportunity was amazing. So, um, yeah, fellow artists who showed at Art Basel there. And uh, once again, Jonathan, as an artist and educator in an art school for 23 years, I've always been aware of the lack of business and network training, especially in the digital space for new artists and designers. Now, that's a great comment, Jonathan, and it kind of leads on to my next question for Lila, which is, what advice do you have for collectors or anyone new to collecting either physical or digital art? I mean, like Jonathan says, you know, it's I feel there's a lack of information or a lack of networking and training out there for new people in the space. So how would you, you know, recommend people go 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 into, you know, learning about Web3 in the digital art space? So good question. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Juliana, Tino and everyone else who's joining us. Uh, and thank you for your questions. I, you know, I think it's um, to your point. It's very intimidating for many people that are new to collecting art as they don't know where to begin. Uh, and now with online art, it's there's a multitude of choices available. And my advice to people that are starting out is, you know, just look at every look at art. Look at as much. Uh, as you can, you know, we all have limited time, figure out what you like, figure out your taste. Uh, and this comes with exposure. Obviously, we, we all have our own budget. Uh, try to get to art galleries, to museums. Again, it depends upon where you live. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can, you know, meet with artists uh, online. And that's why thank you for doing this, Jamie. Um, this helps other people get to know our story. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all about a process of discovery for the collectors. Uh, people often think that one must be rich to own art. And I, I say that that's a myth. I have known collectors with modest means, but great taste. 
who have purchased small works or works of art by emerging artists. Mm -hmm. uh, they've also bought prints uh, from more established artists that are lesser priced. So there are ways around this. You, you know, not many people have million dollar budgets. So it's about a process of discovery, have fun. You know, and the most important thing is if you're buying uh, art for your home or for your office, buy something that's gonna make you happy, that brings you joy. You only have one life to live. And uh, you, know, the, the, you, you brought up a great point about the pandemic. You know, during the pandemic, people were at home. And, you know, there are statistics on this. The art market boomed at every price point. People were at home and whether it was, they were looking at their walls and they realized, oh my God, we're on Zoom. We have nothing behind our walls, you know, to, and, and so they went out and they, they bought art, whether it was online. Um, other people were sitting at home and then they realized, um, and even those who had, you know, multi multi-million dollar homes, they realized that they were sitting with uh, empty walls or, you know, Ikea prints. And then they, they went ahead and they upgraded the art on their walls. So the point being that, you know, um, just don't be afraid of buying something that, you know, just get started. Yeah. Buy what you like. And also don't be afraid of buying something you don't understand. Because once you start buying, that will inform your next decision. Just, you know, buy something small, whatever's within your budget. And, uh, and it's a journey. You know? Yeah, no, I completely agree. And I think what Web3 is actually helping, uh, you know, new people to the space, new people to artwork um, get involved with is actually, you know, artists seem very open to help out and be more, you know, community driven in the Web3 space. I know there's lots of, you know, Web3 um, metaverse art galleries at the moment. And in fact, you know, Real Nifty, we have our own art gallery. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're, we're displaying artwork from our artists on there so people can come in and have a look at that artwork and see what it would look like if they saw it in the real world. And what we're doing, obviously, um, we'll get onto that in a bit, but in a couple of weeks' time, we're actually inviting Lila into the Real Nifty Metaverse, and she's going to be there to curate her own artwork, and people are going to come in for an exhibition, and, you know, they can ask Lila any questions. So keep an eye out for uh, a few more details on that in, in the coming weeks on the Real Nifty Socials, because I really can't wait to uh, showcase Lila's work with Lila in the Metaverse, and um, it's just going to be fantastic. And speaking of the Metaverse, we just got a comment from Tino, who actually says... Uh, Right here, when Le Le when Lila and I first met, our avatars had no legs. So uh, the technology is already moving on through that. We have now have legs in the um, in the metaverse. <laughs> this is true. So yeah, so thanks for that comment, Tino. Um, yeah, the technology has definitely moved forward. Cool. So um, if anyone hasn't got any more questions, this is your last chance to uh, send something through. I'm going to ask you one more question, Lila. So um, what is uh, what um, what are you working on next, basically? And can you tell us a bit about uh, your future work? I think, you know, going forward, um, I, I'm going to continue to create work that I find inspiring, that that's in keeping with my passion and that feeds my soul. You know, the inspiration for the pieces I'm working on now comes from the beauty, beauty of nature, uh, the events taking place around the world and other artists I've had the privilege of knowing. You know, I've had a lot of amazing art teachers that, you know, I, I continue to, you know, I, I collect uh, pieces. Uh, and of course, AI, that's gonna be a big one. So yeah. I've, I've started to incorporate AI into my work. Um, I, I also think it's important to, you know, uh, express the human condition through my art. And if you look at some of my past pieces, you know, my Wall Street experience um, has been reflected in my paintings. So uh, I've, I've also uh, painted, um, you know, major events like Brexit. And, you know, you're, you're uh, on, on that side of the pond and we've talked about that. So I've painted, um, you know, my computer trading screens. I've also 
uh, painted my response to major events like when, you know, the the sad events that were unfolding during the pandemic uh, that led to the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, I've captured that in paint. Uh, and then my, I must, you know, talk about my um, ocean inspired paintings, which are a big part of, you know, my, my um, over, so to speak. And uh, those are going to continue to be uh, something that I will work on. Uh, the, the climate change series of paintings, I think, will continue to evolve. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I will incorporate all of these to push my practice to a new, a new place. Awesome. So, yeah, thank you so much. And I think the most important thing is, you know, since art is an experience, I hope to inspire and empower others through my work to develop personal connections to art and in so doing, you know, strive to make the world a better place for all of us. I love it. No, I love those sentiments. Like, that's fantastic. We've got a couple of uh, more comments. So we've got one from Jonathan Moss. I love the Wall Street paintings, solid abstract paintings. Great. And we've also got a uh, comment from a uh, Jameson Chapman who says, Lila, let's host an event in Chicago or Milwaukee. So there you go. It could be a, a couple more venues for you there, Lila. Love it. Thanks, Jameson. <laughs> Jameson was one of the first few people I talked to um, when I came into the Web3 space. So hi awesome. there and thanks for joining us. That's so good. No, I love that. There's a lot of people I know in the Web3 space now, but it's, you know, the, the people you first met, you always hold a special connection with. And I'm very lucky for one of those to be you, Lila. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. It's, uh, as always, it's been a pleasure. And I'm uh, sure you've given the listeners so much to think about and a good insight into your life, NFTs and the art world. So once again, thank you very much. Um, if anyone would like to contact you with any further questions or to learn more about your artwork, uh, what is the best platforms to get hold of you and, you know, look at your artwork? Thank you. Again, thank you for doing this, Jamie. I would say the best place is my website to check out my work. It's lilapinto.com. It's got you know, um, a lot of um, my different genres of paintings. So it's leilapinto.com. And it's also got uh, previous work. It's got uh, press coverage, gallery exhibitions. Um, other than that, LinkedIn, Instagram are probably my two places. Uh, I, I'm not on Twitter as much um, because I, I don't have time. I, it's not that I don't like any of these other venues. I just don't have the time to to spend on uh, either on YouTube or Twitter. I'd love to develop more of a presence on others. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Real Nifty, the Real Nifty, where I have I've just launched. Thank you for all you're doing, and uh, thanks to everyone who's joined us. Of course. Thank you, Lila. And uh, as you said, uh, Lila's Exuberance Collection is now available for sale over at the Real Nifty Marketplace. That's www.realnifty.xyz. Um, so, yeah, next week we'll be back um, over on Twitter on Thursday, the 13th of April, with a special Twitter space coming live from NFT NYC, as well as uh, Real Nifty team, Sean and Geo, that will be joining us live and reporting back on the fun and events from the satellite side of things. Lila is also going to pop in and say hi and give us her experience from the floor. So it'll be really good to see. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. And I really hope you have a good time at the event next week, Lila. Um, yeah, so I think that's basically it for me, unless you've got any final words. Oh, Jamie, I wanted to mention, hey, I'm also on the metaverse. <laughs> in addition <laughs> to being on... Um, your uh, Real Nifty Spatial Gallery, I'm also on my own Spatial Gallery where um, Tino and I met. So so there you have it. <laughs> there you go. Check, check Lila out in the spatial environment. And remember to you know stay in contact. We're hosting a live exhibition with Lila in the metaverse in the coming weeks. Stay tuned to the Real Nifty channels and you know my socials as well. We'll be announcing more details about that. And it's going to be a fantastic chance for anyone that didn't get a chance to ask Lila any questions to learn more about an artwork from the artist in front of her painting. So you can ask for anything more. 
Lila, once again, thank you so much for today. It's been a pleasure. And um, yeah, thank you to everyone that listened in. We hope to be doing more of these in the future. So um, please come back and uh, let us know what you thought. Thank you very much. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Cheers, Lila. Bye-bye. Thank you.